Hello, my name is Brian Rice. I'm an assistant professor at Stanford. Um, I know a majority of people in the room on first name basis, so I won't spend too long introducing myself. Um, and I'm going to try to rush through the foundational beginning part of this and spend as much time as possible on the method stuff at the end. Which I know that's just what you want to hear from a speaker. Um, but uh, I think a lot of us in this room are starting on the same page. Uh, with some of the foundational work, and so hopefully you will forgive my brevity. So this is the ticking time bomb, identifying high-risk chief complaints in developing countries, no financial interest to declare. I do have to say I have totally disproportionate methods interests. I can be a really, really tedious elevator companion, and it's going to get nitty-gritty a couple of times, and um, if you don't like it, you know, I'm really sorry. Mike, you're here. This is our life. Um, so. This has been going for like 24 hours already today, so you know, we're, uh, stick with me. Um, overview slide, why should we care? Uh, what are chief complaints? Why are they important? How do we define high-risk chief complaints in developed settings and how can we more formally define them in low-income settings? So as I said before in this room, we, we get it. EM as a practice is defined by chief complaint. Uh, more modern training methods are focused on chief complaint rather than diagnosis training. We see the undifferentiated ill and not ill patients that walk through our emergency department. You know, when shortness of breath comes in, it is not a unified disease. It's pneumonia, it's trauma, it's anxiety needed to know for work. There's just this huge range of um, intersections of patients and disease that can be represented by the term shortness of breath. Um, that's not true for the rest of the hospital, right? In the rest of the hospital, you know, the altitude-based um, intelligence in medicine where the more floors you go up, the smarter you get, um, that's numerator world, right? They deal with diseases. Um, there's a lot less discrepancy about what you do with diseases. That's not us. We're down here in denominator land. Denom the website and or podcast numerator world versus denominator land, I shotgun that title. Um, anyone who wants it on the ground floor, it's going to be a million dollar project. Um, but we see the denominator, right? We see we see things that are not yet defined as disease, and it's fundamentally a different way of looking at the world, and I think we understand that. Um, but how, and thank you, Matt, for um, helping me articulate how to make this a more interesting phrasing of the question, how would you take that understanding and then apply it outside of this room? How can you get in a conversation with someone who is not a practicing emergency physician and make them understand why chief complaint is important? I think we've seen a lot of data like this. This is malaria cases 2017, sadly an increase from 2016. We can talk about that in another forum. Um, and this sort of idea of that you can represent the epidemiology of human disease and suffering with diagnoses is so commonplace that people don't even think about it. There are no chief complaint maps. Um, not yet. Um, but what if we could say that chief complaint better represents the resources needed, Dr. Bitter, um, and the associated with patient outcomes, could that not be a superior way of representing the epidemiology of emergency disease? Um, a little bit of a twist on the thinking that we walked into the room with, but I think not an unreasonable leap. Um, so the, the talk of the title is High Risk Chief Complaints, and that's certainly an idea that's bandied about in every training program. Um, as part of the manuscript development that comes later on in this uh, presentation, uh, we've been doing a lit search on what defines a high-risk chief complaint, and there is no formal definition of a high-risk chief complaint um, from any sort of foundational literature. There is uh, an abundance of expert opinion on it. Um, There's an EM Clinics of North America a couple years ago where it had three large sections about high-risk chief complaints. And there's a commonality in language about there being a diseases with requiring a lot of resources, difficult to diagnose, high mortality, and throughout it there's this undercurrent of uh, risk management. Um, in the foreword from the editor, uh, EM thought leader, Dr. Matu, um, he stated that high risk uh, implies danger to patients, but not only to patients, and it's this um, concomitance of health risk to patient and legal risk to the physician. And that's sort of when, in the US at least, um, amongst developed settings, when we talk about high risk chief complaints, that's really uh, how it's being used. 
if we are to take a step back, admit that malpractice legal issues, these exist worldwide, but if we're going to approach it from a research standpoint, a more rigorous perspective, if we're going to try to define high risk chief complaints in low middle income countries, we can conceivably take out the concept of risk to physician and we're just left with risk as compared to what baseline, and which is sort of the, the question that we're going to attempt to answer here today, what would a chief complaint be here? Um, so the majority of the work that I'm going to talk about today comes from uh, this setting. This is uh, Nachibale Hospital in rural southwest Uganda. It's an NGO hospital, volume of three to 5,000 patients per year through the ED. Uh, we have data going back to 2009 from this site that's associated with three-day mortality outcomes for admitted and discharged patients. But when you go here, uh, you walk in, you talk to a student nurse in uh, Ryankori, which is the local language, and then your chief complaint is written down on a piece of paper uh, in standard British Ugandan English, and um, that is what a chief complaint is in this setting. So um, before we deep dive on that, um, the chief complaints uh, literature review. So there are likely going to be people in this room who may have work that is not on here, may be available ahead of press. Come see me afterwards, um, please, for, for the bibliography. Um, but there is not a huge body of literature. Uh, in 2013, there was a consensus statement, um, and the authors were Drs. Mawafi and Reynolds talking about how chief complaint needed to be placed as a research priority. I know many people in the room are co-authors on those papers. Um, and basically the bullet points are that chief complaints align with how we are training. It allows for epidemiologic and syndromic surveillance, can characterize resource needs, associating what resources are needed for which patients, uh, gives a common language between patients, EM providers, and the hospital, and it standardizes data collection. Um, I think this is something that's under-expressed. Um, Number one, you do not need skilled interpretation. The idea of chief complaint is can be taken by a lay person. I know there's a lot of settings um, in East Africa where physicians are the ones who are writing the charts and actually their chief complaint will oftentimes be their diagnosis. That's not the system that we're, that we're talking about. This is a more traditional at triage, not a physician, the words that they write down. Um, the other bonus of this rather than not requiring skill training is that it, it doesn't rely on diagnostic tendencies or resources. Um, there are certainly neighboring hospitals with identical weather and elevation in Uganda that are just down the road from each other and one will run an 80% malaria admission rate and the other will have a 15% um, and neither of them are based on testing. Um, so like the, those sorts of trends of calling things malaria are certainly well described in uh, the literature and the fact that you know, if you don't have the tools you need for a case definition, diagnoses become challenging. Like if all of your pneumonias do not have a chest x-ray, what is really the meaning of that for surveillance? So chief complaints gets around that in some very interesting ways. Um, this is the list of um, LMIC chief complaint uh, publications to date that do not have any mortality included. We have three that have associated, the, Sorry, that have included mortality data, but no association between mortality and the chief complaints. And then there's only one paper, <clears throat> one and only one, uh, that has used novel data science to develop a local ontology for a low middle income country. Oh my gosh, that's me. Um, you're about to witness the sin of public academic onanism as I will talk at length about my own work. My apologies, I hope most of you knew that was what you're getting in for. It's gonna get ugly, you guys. Okay, so um, why do we use the word ontology other than to pummel you into submission with my erudite liberal arts background, marrying philosophy and computer science? How awesome am I? It's also the only word that you can possibly use. So ontology is some things that represent some stuff, um, which just doesn't look as good on a slide. Um, so basically, it is a mapping of some words or symbols onto some reality. 
Um, and before computer science, I was very much in the field of philosophy. And now we use it as basically like any coding system where these words represent these things. And if we're talking about chief complaint, it's that these words or phrases can represent an intersection of patient and disease in a, in a meaningful way. Um, and that this can be used to understand patterns of disease as well as standardized research efforts as I have belabored already. So, in the setting we're talking about in rural Uganda, um, the application of an existing coding system uh, we determined would be wildly inappropriate. You know, there is no room for ICD-10 here, and there is no landscape for the methods of how to do this. Um, no one has ever used data to derive a chief complaint list in any setting. Um, there has been a notable scientific effort um, the CEDIS list, the Canadian Emergency Department Information System Presenting Complaint List, um, which was done uh, 2003, where it was a really rigorous process of a, um, a modified Delphi process that involved a whole bunch of different really smart uh, people referencing their own practices, referencing their own systems, but um, to develop a short list of chief complaints that was a couple hundred long, uh, but it wasn't data driven, it was very much uh, physician and eminence driven. And so we were wondering, is there a way to go actually just to the data and build up from there? And there is. So this is, <laughs> this figure represents two years of my life. Um, so we inherited uh, 27,000 patient free text chief complaints. Um, where there is a line where you could write any number of words about any number of uh, chief complaints in any sort of format. Um, these were then entered into a digital database um, and output such wonders as H, this is my personal favorite, was HA2 slash 2 knocked by Lori times 1 slash 24, which was A which would ideally be coded as road traffic accident, knocked by lorry, and number, chief complaint number two would be um, traumatic brain injury or head injury, and then the duration of these complaints would be one hour. Um, so uh, hell is free text, and that's where I spent a big chunk of um, my life was reducing this 40,000 strings into cleanable, usable, possibly codable data. So. Um, we ran through this algorithm where we were able to knock off, uh, just by standardizing spelling, we were able to bring it down to about 10,000, as you see taking out uh, statements of duration and um, overly specific body part descriptions, spelling abbreviations, left, right, we come down to 555. Um, the step between 555 to 83 is probably the most, uh, not questionable, but discussable uh, methodologic part of this because that's where we start introducing the error of humans. Um, three physicians, um, including this guy, um, did the coding. We took the 555, we wrote down what we thought a uh, good solid chief complaint. You know, pain in the abdomen was abdominal pain. Um, pain comma abdominal was abdominal pain. Abdominal pain was abdominal pain. Abdominal distension, does that go as abdominal pain or does that go as abdominal distension? We each made our list. We put the list together. There was, there was moderate agreement, and I say that in terms of kappa. Um, and anyways, we were able to generate this list that came down to 83 chief complaints that represented all but point. 0.001% of complaints that came into the emergency department over this time. Um, looking at the output of it, it's a numbing list of 83 uh, chief complaints that are usable for data and methodologic studies, and an actual rubber meets the road uh, version that we produced hoping to be able to directly impact care um, these are the 23 chief complaints plus one space for other that represent over 80% of all chief complaints in this setting. Um, and we made the decision to break out trauma um, and injury patterns. So that was not yet a decision that was made on the basis of data. We're going to come to that in a couple minutes. It was the right call, um, but that was not how the data set we had was. That was how basically everyone who we spoke to from WHO down felt that things should be done, and so that was what we produced. Uh, the next step, and this is where things start to get interesting, um, is 
Okay, here's, here's our null hypothesis, high-risk chief complaint, that there does not exist a set of high-risk chief complaints that will independently predict an increased three-day mortality above and beyond the other information in triage, right? This is the really exciting part. Can you say some words in triage that independently, regardless of your HIV status, age, vital signs, predict your short-term mortality. This is what we're looking for for training. This is what we're looking for for research. This is what we've been looking at for the last two years. So here are the methods. Uh, split the data into a derivation and validation data set. Um, Mike and Keon were instrumental in all of this work. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Um, we will not be talking about the validation part of it. It's it works, um, but I just there, there wasn't time in the slides. Um, we decided to set the cutoff for complaints that we would not analyze or all ones that occurred in less than 0.02% of visits. Why would those have even been in the 83 list? There were some things that we didn't see much in our department, which very much define emergency care, pregnancy-related complaints being foremost amongst those. Um, there's a separate maternal ED, and we were looking to have a more universal uh, data tool, and so feel free to approach me with questions about that afterwards, but that was where we set the, the cutoff line. Um, we took the chief complaints that we had, that those 83, associated them to the patient mortality data we had, and then we did our recursive exclusion algorithm. So this is kind of the, the meat of what's going on, and I'm going to spend a couple of my remaining minutes here talking about this, because I think that this really defines kind of the idea of what we're doing. So we generated variables such that did you say each of these 83 uh, things regardless of what other complaints you said. So we are intentionally avoided any sort of interaction terms. It's not fever and shortness of breath. It's not head injury and dizziness. It's did you say the word the chief complaint X um, and how does that establish and what mortality is associated with that. Um, you know, for the data set, it would be, say, shortness of breath was the highest uh, associated mortality. We take that one out of the data set. Everyone who has said that they have, uh, that they have shortness of breath, regardless of what their other chief complaints are, they're now taken out of the data set. We rerun the algorithm, relist out all of them by order of uh, mortality, highest to lowest, and then exclude that next one from the top until eventually you have a list of a handful of chief complaints that have no associated mortality at the end, and then those are blocked out. Does, I see some nodding around the room. Does that more or less make sense? Um, the reason we picked that is that what we're talking about is you want, a, ideally, you're looking for words that people can say that would make someone in triage realize that additional resources are needed, right? So we're looking for big flashing red flags and can those exist in the data? There are many, many other ways of looking at this, but we felt that that was the most directly applicable to the care environments that we were studying. Um, we then define high-risk chief complaint. There we go, first time ever. You're seeing it here. High-risk chief complaint is one of those chief complaints that doubles your baseline mortality. I think that that's a reasonable place to put it. You could say triple, you could say quadruple, you could say increases by 50%. Um, after a, no small amount of debate, that was, uh, that was where we set it. Um, less importantly, but necessary for the model was identifying low-risk chief complaint. I'm not, we weren't really looking to build a tool that will tell you whom to ignore, rather whom to pay attention to, and so that's why it's built the way that it is. And the, the algorithm would have to be slightly different if you're trying to identify low-risk chief complaints, but we are stratifying things by this, and so when you get to low risk, they have said none of those other things, and they only have one of these uh, remaining lower zero-risk chief complaints. All right, that is as long as I can spend on a zero picture. This is not how they tell you to lecture look at a bunch of boring words and talk ad nauseum about methods. Um, this is what they tell you to do. Look at this. This is uh, the last two calendar years of my life. Um, it's largely illegible in this setting, um, which is so sad because I love this. This is how, what percentage of patients that present to emergency department have the chief complaint and how high is their mortality based on saying that word. Um, it just doesn't project well here. And so again, all right, this is the highest tech PowerPoint slide I have ever produced. This was Matt's inspiration as well. There's going to be moving, things are going to fade in and out. Your attention is going to be drawn left to right. I'm feeling this one. All right, uh, this is it. This is the high risk uh, chief complaint. Um, shortness of breath, it was the most frequent of the high risk chief complaints. That's why it's highlighted here. You will notice constipation is up there. 
um, which is not something that we're expecting to see. Epistaxis. Uh, most people are de developing uh, EM curriculum de novo without access to the data. I doubt they would highlight those things as these are the highest risk complaints. Um, there are also facile trivial things such as unresponsiveness. Um, that's captured in every single uh, LMIC triage score there is. That's not uh, an important piece of data. And so we understood that we were going to pull some things out that we already knew. Being unconscious when you show up at triage, that's you didn't need to spend a couple years to figure that out. But um, these other things, it is really interesting. We then have our medium risk, um, chest pain and abdominal pain, the, the largest uh, in terms of prevalence. Um, those do not independently predict uh, worse outcomes. We have our very low risk, which is where we see road traffic, accident, and head injury. Um, so again, this algorithm is developed so that if you say any of the scary things, um, that you will be identified. And so these are patients that have, basically they only have mechanism without additional complaint. And this very much validates the idea that just including mechanism, though that reflects daily practice in Uganda. If you write these charts today, they're getting written with road traffic accident as chief complaint. But it is important going forward with data and training that we understand that mechanism alone is not enough to predict these things. And then zero risk, which are sound very much like the fast track board at any of our institutions. Uh, okay, so we now have these ca this ordered categorical variable. Dr. Cohn. Uh, we're now going to plug this into a uh, logistic, multiple logistic regression model, which includes all of the usual suspects, age, uh, sorry, um, as part of the methods, we are looking at only 18 and over. We do have the analysis for under five and then five to 18. Um, as you'd expect, the numbers, things are totally different. Um, anyone who's interested in child chief complaint, please come find me afterwards. I'd love to talk about this. Um, but these are basically your vitals. This is all the rest of the information available at triage. And then we have this, and we see that on the far side of the multiple logistic regression, um, after, con <laughs> oh, the column, it's two lines. This is my <laughs> four years, and I didn't write just the margin. That's so sad. All right, so much for best young speaker. Um, so the uh, after controlling for your vital signs, if you have a low risk chief complaint, you have a 0.2 risk of death, and you have more than doubled your uh, risk of seven day of three day mortality. Um, if you have one of those high risk chief complaints with high in a highly significant way, and for the methods people in the room, oof, that's my AURCs. Look at how good that model gets. All right. Um, if that doesn't do it for you guys, uh, we won't. That's fine. Um, so we choose to reject the null hypothesis, and we do say that data analysis can produce a list of chief complaints that independently predict short-term mortality. It works, um, which is great to see after four years. Uh, so why, why is this important? Where does this get us, and how do we get on to the next speaker? Um, we can use this to develop locally appropriate training. I can take this to my curriculum developers in Uganda on Monday. I can say that chest pain, that should not be our focus. Constipation, and interestingly, abdominal distension was at the top of the moderate risk. Those two probably identify um, obstruction, and uh, that's why it's important. But I can go back, I can say abdominal distension and constipation, that's bad. Someone comes in bleeding from their nose. If you walk three days out of the bush to see me with a bloody nose, you are probably going to die. This is not the focus of our training currently. We very much have chest pain is important, but you know, shortness of breath, that is a cardinal chief complaint in emergency medicine and should remain there. Chest pain needs to get bumped down on the list. I am sorry, chest pain. Um, and as far as data collection goes, um, clearly this, uh, the movement away from mechanism only, it's going to be an important one. It's going to be hard to drive that in many settings where they're not looking to data scientists to develop intake forms, um, but in areas where we can input and on hospital advisory committees throughout, and as far as we're looking at development and at uh, um, you know, AFEM levels, at SAM levels, that these are sort of, uh, these are efforts that we can push um, informatics in these settings. And why is this important? This is where people are being born. This is where kids are dying. Uh, these are the people that are going to need more, a uh, disproportionate amount of the emergency care in the world in the next 10 years. Um, this is why we do what we do. Uh, so 
Taken home, chief complaint is poorly studied, poor, uh, high risk is poorly defined. We can clearly define it in these settings and we can make this a meaningful statement um, that can be a useful triage and training tool going forward. Thank you to everyone who got me up here, our local partners in Uganda, SAM, GEMA, and uh, SEMI. Here are the references, and if I have any time left, I'd love to take questions. Thank you. Is it about the AUROC graph? Because I can go back to that. Uh, it's, it's related. Okay. Um, actually, I'm not asking. <sighs> Curses. Um, All right. So, this is remarkable work. Thank you. For sure. Here, even in, say, the Bay Area. Um, yeah, so absolutely. Thank you for the question. Um, I, I do. So the question of how generalizable this list is is an interesting one. I think more importantly, this methodology um, is hugely generalizable. Um, there, we are talking with some of the natural language processing and machine learning folks about how we could make a more generalizable process that. Um, parallelizes uh, with a greater number of physicians sort of that, that very interesting um, human input step and minimizes it. And then basically how we could build a system that, you know, to a large part um, unsupervised, uh, right, makes its own coding list and then can take this data, which is an entirely automated process, and then produce these native lists at any, um, basically anywhere where the data exists. So I'm pretty comfortable that this um, specific list works throughout rural and suburban areas in southwest Uganda and probably throughout Uganda. We have another data set from another uh, regional referral hospital that we're going to do next with it to see uh, the direct applicability, but certainly the, the methodology should work at, um, at these sites and it should work if we build the NLP part of it right, it should work in French as well as in English because the actual words that are getting said don't matter except as signifiers of disease, hence the whole painful ontology thing. But you know, really the words that you're saying doesn't matter. It's the association between the words and the patient outcomes. Um, and so I think that the step from that that you said and that certainly um, was of conversation at, AF, at AFSM this year was the, the chief complaint mapping. Right, that this is something that you will be able to see this as you start distributing it throughout a country, throughout a region, throughout Sub-Saharan Africa, and ideally um, throughout the other WHO regions, is that throughout um, each of the you know, low-income and then middle-income strata, what the patterns are. And then um, I do absolutely think that bringing this information back, you know, taking a step back to the fact that we have day jobs in the, in the U.S., you know, I see patients in the Stanford Emergency Department, I'm telling my trainees that chest pain is high risk, whereas in my own clinical practice, I'm not entirely sure that it predicts how well that predicts um, short-term outcomes. And I think that taking this data, which is readily available in our hospital systems, and looking at using it as a feedback tool for what people say, how it actually predicts their outcome, I think could be incredibly interesting, especially as you're looking at um, the widely heterogeneous populations that come into an emergency department. And if someone who is a, you know, from another country, if someone is from a, you know, if one of my patients without fixed housing, you know, like if they're saying these things versus if, you know, the, insured up tech billionaire. Oh, no, I'm ah, too late. Um, yeah, so how different patient strata can, uh, you need moderators for these things, um, how different patient strata, it can apply differently. I think that it's a hugely interesting question that we can and should feed back into our own um, information and training systems. All right, thank you guys so much for letting me run over.